what is going on you guys welcome back good evening everybody good morning good afternoon from those folks abroad so i want to appreciate you guys very much for coming to another dinner here with sergeant tank even though i don't have any dinner in front of me but my wife and i are actually going out for dinner after this concludes so we got susan in the house much love to you susan thank you so much as always so that is susan for slc aquatics uh, White, uh, Jamie, Mooney, Joel. We got Rob with Racing's Natural Aquarium. Uh, Dean, what's up, bro? MJ Aquatics, Priscilla. I'm waiting an hour to go to the gym. This better be good, bro. <laughs> I'll do my best, Priscilla. I will do my best. With that being said, the topic for this evening, uh, therapeutic benefits that I have found personally within the hobby. And we'll spend the next uh, 10, 15 minutes talking about that. But I couldn't have identified somebody here in the fish fam more so than this gentleman that I want to introduce to you all. And most of you guys are already going to know who this individual is going to be. But without further ado, I want to introduce a special guest with us here on Sergeant Tang. So Hang Lee here with us this evening. And um, I know from watching... Um, the videos and so forth there was a very touching video that was put out some time back over on king lee's channel and of course once this concludes i'll go ahead and add all those links and everything for you guys if you want to go back later on and check it out uh right down below in the description so welcome king i really appreciate it brother for you stopping in and just kind of sharing your heart with us so with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and open up the floor let you introduce yourself and just kind of do your thing hey everybody um my name's Kang Lee. Um, most of you guys probably see me around in chat or seen a couple of videos that I put out. Um, but yeah, um, Kang Lee, I, I live in Minnesota. And um, that's about it. That's who I am. I'm glad to be part of the Fish Fam. And uh, glad, I uh, want to say thanks to Jeremy for uh, letting me be on his uh, stream there. And uh, Having me as a guest, I feel honored about that. So that's awesome. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Kang. I mean, definitely it's a, it's a blessing to have somebody as an asset to yourself because of not only from all the financial contributions that you've done to assist not only this channel um, that without, of course, the entire community. Um, that's why I always, for me, even through Facebook and using other social media platforms, oftentimes you'll hear Jeremy, here, quote unquote, the phrase, too. and that really is um the most sincere way i can say is it definitely is much love and a blessing to each and every one of you guys here in the community because without everyone here to contribute and subscribe and to like and share and comment um and i think i'm probably speaking on behalf of every content creator here on youtube is without you all obviously we wouldn't have a channel or have anybody to interact with so um Definitely, it is a blessing to have somebody uh, like you, Kang Lee, that can really contribute. Um, I know that financially through Super Chats and so forth, it definitely is a, it's an honor. It's a blessing for me personally and for my family to have, you know, the, the graciousness that you've shown over the months here um, through Sergeant Tank. So definitely much love to you, man. I really do appreciate it. Kang Lee want, is one of those individuals that... Um, is always behind the scenes, and, and I see so oftentimes in the midst of working and having family and kids and so forth, um, doing so much to contribute. So thank you, thank you. My just sharing for the next five minutes or so, kind of the background of what kind of led you to the hobby or kind of just give us your background. Yeah, so um, my, my background in the hobby was um... – as a teen, early teenage years, me and my brother um, were raising a lot of bettas um, just as childhood, you know, fun, raising bettas and stuff like that. But um, as it progressed and then like, uh, like four or five years ago, my, my brother passed away. And then um, from there, I um, kind of closed down, I closed down everything. I, to go downhill um was having a lot of struggles in life with uh, a lot of stuff you know just um marriage was uh 
uh, in effect, um, didn't have motivation to do anything. Um, and it was just, it, it was a hard time. And I was going down um, a road that uh, nobody really should go. And then um, one day my wife was like, hey, you and your brother, you guys need to um, have lots of fishes and you guys enjoy doing that. So one, well, and I had all the fishes that we, all the fish tanks that we had closed down was in the, the garage and stuff like that. And she was like, why don't you go grab one, set it up and, you know, see if it sparks anything. And um, I went in, grabbed a fish tank, set it up. And from there, it just, it kind of, the hobby kind of brought me. Um, and uh, from there, I just kind of regained confidence in myself and all that stuff. And just, um, I see the hobby as a really, really relaxing thing to do. Um, when I'm in my, when I'm in the fish room, I, I don't think about anything else. It's just me and the fishes and the fish tanks and what's next and what to do. And uh, it lets you escape a lot of, you know, the everyday struggles in life and stuff like that. So um, that's kind of how I've kind of came back into the hobby. Um, so now I got a fish room. I think I got probably about 18 fish tanks uh, ranging from five gallon to 55. I, I have a 125 in the garage that I haven't pulled out yet. Um, eventually that will be more probably like a rainbow display thing um, that I'm thinking about doing. Um, but hopefully the uh, fish room continues to grow um, and everything. Yeah, hopefully it continues to grow and to do all that so um, I've had a lot of support from the fish fam and uh, a lot of people like uh, Jeremy helped me out a lot um, Jimmy's helped me out a lot you know uh, Rob from Flip Aquatics you know like Bob Corey you know uh, Dean is an awesome person uh, Susan you know um, watching them um, Priscilla Nisi like everybody's just so supportive in the fish fam and I just believe that it's it's such a great hobby to be in and um all the people in the hobby is, is so uplifting they're so positive that it's it's just it's a great and, and 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 i love it and i love the hobby for that and i love the, the community and the fish fans for that so that's awesome yeah that's that's awesome king um definitely i, I couldn't have said those words better um so yeah i mean you know, there, there's so many awesome individuals within the community and, and and so forth. And just to see how something such as fish keeping can expand beyond that of keeping things in glass boxes, I guess you would say, for lack of better terms. The whole basis around Sergeant Tank and the channel. Here you mentioned uh, something about a rainbow tank setup. Do you mind kind of... Uh, telling us what your thoughts are i mean as far as a source that you might have in mind to get them from um because i would love to love to know a little bit more about that and i think some folks here uh would as well but before i do that i do have to give a shout out to priscilla thank you so much much love priscilla so definitely check out priscilla she likes fish keeping she's a phenomenal artist uh to say the least so please go over there and check her out um, but thank you for the $10 super chat. Much love to you, sis. So I'm going to turn the floor over to Kang. And, uh, yeah, if you don't mind telling us a little bit more about that, I definitely am intrigued. Yeah. So, um, I, I have a, a 125 in the garage and, um, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with it. Um, I was just kind of sitting there and I've kind of been, um, I'm on, I'm on this huge guppy thing going on right now. So but then I was like, okay, I don't want to put all these guppies in a 125. So um, when uh, Jimmy came uh, and swung by, um, you guys probably heard um, him talking about it. And Corey's like, and he kind of left me um, a couple of his rainbows. Um, and I got him on the 55 now. I've, I've always been fascinated with rainbows. My brother got um, some rainbows. Um, he had some Bozmanis, um, turquoise, and stuff like that. And I've always been kind of fascinated with rainbows, but I've just never really took in the leap on it. And Jimmy kind of forced me into going that way with leaving me those rainbows. So I was just thinking, I was like, I have that 125, and I see 
Lucas is 125 in his rainbows, and you know, of course, you know, I, no way I can mimic Lucas's fish tanks in any way at all. I know that, but I would be able to love to, but uh, I'm, I'm not that that good um, compared to Lucas. But uh, um, I just see it, and and, the, and I see Bob's rainbows, and I'm and I'm trying to fall in love with them. So I'm like, you know, I. I really do like them, and uh, I think that's kind of the way I'm going to end up going with the 125 is probably turning into a rainbow um, tank. I'm not sure quite where I'm going to get the sources from. Um, I was thinking possibly um, one would probably, probably for sure um, aqua bid and um, see if I can get some um, um, thinking about getting some from maybe like um, Greg Sage or um, – uh, Eric Botterock from uh, Audubon Aquatics. Um, I've seen them post some stuff up, and I've heard great things about their line of uh, rainbows, and um, maybe get a couple from there and see where it goes from there. So that's kind of the the idea of where I want to head with the one, two, five, and the rainbow thing. That's awesome, Kang. Thank you so much for sharing that, for sure. What keeps you driving in the hobby? So what drives me and keeps me going in uh, keeping um, fish is – um really the unknown um you never know what what can happen in a fish tank or what can what's going on with a fish you can do the same thing a hundred times over and um it, you will get a different um reaction from the fish or it, it's a it's a never-ending learning um uh, process you know and it's and that that kind of keeps your interest going because it's it's never the same thing twice in a fish room, I guess, or in a fish tank. Um, and and that always sparks my my interest. Um, just never having the same thing. I I get bored really easily. Um, so like if if I like I can I can never do a, a desk job just because. If it's the same thing day in and day out, I'd get tired of it. I wouldn't want to do something like that. So um, fish uh, in the aquarium hobby, it's, it's never the same thing twice. You walk in there and it's always something new. You know, fishes are interacting. It's some time and that keeps my interest up. And, you know, and just watching the fishes grow and, you know, do all that. That that keeps me going. The, and the, the, peaceful, uh, the peacefulness of it. Um, it's just, it's really relaxing. It's it's one of the, the things that I found um, that really relaxes me more than anything is just kind of being in the fish room. I, I'd sit in the fish room and, and in there, and um, next thing I know, my wife will be calling for me to go back upstairs, and um, she'll be like, what are you doing down there? I'm just doing my fishes, but she's like, you know, it's, been a couple of hours and to me it feels like it was just five ten minutes and um the peacefulness the calmness of it um that's what keeps me going and that's what i look forward to every time i go in there that's what i love about it but um kayla had a question here on here that i just thought she was asking me and she goes uh question is how do i feel about betas and what is your favorite uh tail type Favorite tail type? Um, I don't think I have a favorite tail type. Um, I, I love the. Um, um, now if it's uh, crown tail or um, plaquette or tail, anything like that. Um, I as long as the fish, if the fish looks nice, mm -hmm. I don't really like. Um, how do I feel about bettas? I love bettas. Um, one of my favorite fishes. I don't keep any at the moment because that's one of the fishes that um, I want to kind of stay away from because I know if I get into it, then it becomes dramatically overbearing, I want to say, for me because then, then with bettas for me. So then I, I'll, I'll want to get a second, I want to get a third, and next thing I know, I'll have an entire fish room like I used to with just all bettas. So 
I, I'm trying to hold off as much as I can from getting better. I do want them, um, but I, I'm, I'm fighting as hard as I can for it. Just because, yeah, just because I know for a fact that one will never be, will never be able to, would never satisfy me. So, but um, my favorite beta that, that I've ever gotten, um, that I ever had was a uh, red crown tail half moon um, that I got from Indonesia. 25, um, um, I'm going to turn into hopefully uh, a planted uh, 125 rainbow tank and um, turn that into a somewhat presentable 125 rainbow tank and um, I just love how, how nice they look when they're nice and big so we'll see mm -hmm. how that goes and then um, I was also talking about uh, uh, bettas. Um, Kayla had asked me, I was saying um, I love them, but, but I'm trying to kind of stay away from there because I know once I get into them, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. Um, and it, it just seems like I can never have enough and it never ends and then I breed them and then I get off and it just, it, it becomes a mess and there's jars everywhere and kind of stay away from that. So um, I'm... I've been close and close to actually getting one, but I'm kind of, I'm restrained because I know it might, it might turn into a, oh, you know, better horror fish room in my fish room. So we'll see, we'll see how long I can fight the bug, but the bug is inviting me. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. They can definitely uh, take, take hold. That's for sure. You're, you're taking, it's like, People always talk about multiple tank syndrome or MTS, but yeah, I think the same thing goes. It definitely with fish really uh, start to multiply the different species of fish because there is so many different varieties. Like with shrimp, um, we talked, Kayla and I, last week, uh, Thursday. Uh, you guys definitely go back and check it out. But I know for myself, um, I've been breeding specifically Neocaridina shrimp for almost 12 plus years. Same thing like with your ancestral species of Placos and so forth. And I want to say I know I personally have 20 and 30 at any given time on breeding projects because to me, um, definitely uh, is something that I really have a passion about. I still definitely look at myself very much as a hobbyist. Um, to me, my point of view um, or anything in life in that general is like a relationship or whatever it might be. I mean, as long as you're emotionally physically and so forth invested into something and then once it starts to become a burden or no longer of interest then it's probably time to reevaluate um because it definitely can get overwhelming um at times and we've all had uh that have been in the in this hobby long enough definitely our fair share of losses i know for myself not only uh losses of course of livestock but of course financial losses and so forth um but yeah so with that being said, let's see here what we got going on. We got Adam C. What's up, brother? Appreciate you so much, uh, as always, for your support. Bracken, very nice to see you, man. Uh, glad to see. I hope um, everything in college and so forth is going for you, buddy. Going well for you. Uh, so it's nice to see uh, Bracken in the house. Let's see here. We got Cole. Susan for SLC Aquatics is wondering. I uh, want to know what to do with the self-cloning crayfish. Left a lot. I don't know if she is buried up or not. She hides all the time and is eating again. Though, yeah. Um, if you find that they're hiding, oftentimes um, they are very, very hardy species. As long as you provide the right calcium content and so forth. And what she's talking about, she obtained here through Sergeant Tank, a uh, parthenogenic strain of your marble self-cloning crayfish. Um, and more or less, they are asexual, so hence the name parthenogenic, which means that they actually can self-reproduce. Yeah, so um, what's really cool about the parthenogenic species of crayfish is will slowly transition over generations of them. So let's say um, I kind of like to use the, the F characteristics of kind of explaining this because I know... Um, I have yet to put out video and people keep asking me, can you do like a species focus on self-cloning crayfish? And I definitely need to do that. And I like to stick to my word. So, so 
call. Give me some time. I need to stop saying I'm going to do it and actually follow through with it. I know that's where self accountability comes in. So, um, but uh, let's say the ones I got, they're not an F zero, meaning wild caught. Kind of using this in terms so to kind of break it down and make people understand. But so let's say you take an F zero. So of course they're partnogenic, so they're self reproducing, and then. After they have Fry, so we're going to call them Fry at now F1. Um, and then once those Fry then have Fry, so now F2, even at F1 and F2, you will slowly start to see them with the appropriate um, uh, distribution of foods and so forth. You can actually see uh, the characteristics and so forth change through coloration. So you can actually get blues, reds, orange even a little bit of green. Uh, so um, I don't publicly put that out there on the website where we sell them um, just because it's never a guarantee that that trade is always going to be there. But um, a lot of times you will see that over generations of these guys reproducing. So the, uh, sorry, my wife popped in here and she's holding me accountable now. That's thrown me off. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> so Appreciate it very much. Um, she's throwing me under the bus here live. That's all right. So with that being said, uh, to wrap that up, but uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, no, I'm completely discombobulated. But uh, yeah, it is our date night. I know that she has a question on here too for you guys, which is not fish related, but that reminds me it's something if you guys are in the birds. Um, that maybe I'll have her come down here and actually, uh, if I can get her on video, uh, to go ahead and ask. So maybe the community can help us out here. She's wanting a bird and so forth, but yeah, I don't know anything about birds. But with that being said, I'm going to turn the last few minutes over here to Kang Lee. Hopefully that makes sense with the reproduction of the self-clones. Like I said, I will do a species focus on those guys to try to break it down. Um, a little bit more in detail, but it uh, looks like she's not going to come here on video. Uh, it's a Jende Con Conyer. Cat Tessic Lap allowed you broke Jeremy's brain. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she did. No, not moving from the recliner, she said. Okay. All right. So, let me, before I leave here and turn the floor back over, let me make sure that nobody's. Uh, I miss nothing. We got JH Aquatics in the house. What turtle is that behind? Excuse me, is behind you. This is a larger, most of these guys I've um, uh, rehabilitated. So um, we're more or less people have like surrendered them. Um, I try to help folks out within the community if, if they don't have the means to uh, financially or more so um, adequately care for different species of fish or turtles and so forth. But um, let me move the camera so you guys can see here. The lighting isn't going to be the greatest. This one right up here is a larger. It's about a 15-inch uh, female red-eared slider. Um, I want to say all these guys are going to be females. Uh, I got a terrapin right here. Uh, let's see here. I think the other ones are basking. Oh, we got another one here. This is another one that I had taken in. Uh, the lighting isn't the greatest. This is another red-eared slider, so somebody that couldn't uh, care for it anymore, so I went ahead and rehomed. Um, and then we do have one more red-eared slider, which is up on that basking platform up there, which you're not going to be able to see. So, All right, but great question. So I'm going to turn the floor back over here to King Lee and uh, let you kind of wrap things up. And again, I want to appreciate Kang very, very much. Uh, definitely much love again. Uh, I apologize for the technical difficulties that we've had uh, with video and so forth. Um, sometimes just make it work, right? So comment, let us know what you thought about it. I understand the video and the audio might not be the greatest, so definitely you'd be pointing out the obvious to us there that there's some issues. But if you have any specific questions with fish and aquarium related, definitely go ahead and put it in the comment section uh, once this is uploaded, and uh, we'll be sure and get back with you guys. So. Well, first, I just want to say um, thanks a lot, Jeremy, for having me on here. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's my actual first live stream, so uh, feel the newbie here and uh, trying to take advice from you guys. So um, 
I uh, just want to say thank you. I appreciate it very much. It means a lot to me. Um, you having me on your channel and doing this whole live stream thing. Um, yeah. Um, but um, I just want to say thanks to everybody uh, in the Fish Fam, everybody who's uh, on on the live streams, everybody who's um, I was commenting or um, just you know everybody. I was staying positive. It it, it helps in so many ways um just not to see you know all the negativity stuff that goes on stuff like that but a whole bunch of positive and that's what we need more and that's what we need to keep doing and i love the fish fam for always being positive on every aspect that they do and i just want to say thank you to everybody um you guys truly changed um you know people's lives and how they see things and um, how they go about their everyday lives and uh, truly uh, from bottom heart, thank you for everybody for, for doing that. And um, I know I haven't put out a video in a while. Um, I'm working on it uh, right now. Um, but uh, stay tuned and hopefully, you know, we can all grow together. And uh, I hope to see as many people as I can at the aquatic experience. Uh, in Chicago. Uh, this will be my first year going, so I'm very excited to go and see uh, and meet everybody there. So hopefully as many of you guys can get out there and uh, we can all meet. Uh, we can go do something, hang out together, and that'd be awesome. So everybody for out tuning in, chiming in, and um, everybody's support. All right. Well, thank you so much, um, Ken. Uh, be sure and check out our website, which is sergeanttank.com for that Sergeant Tank swag. Lots of dry goods, lots of livestock. We're always adding new things to it. Make sure that you check out Kang Lee and stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on and happy fishing. And we'll talk to you guys on the next one.